this video, we are going to talk about eVPN distributed NAT on Nexus 9000. Let's do a quick recap on network address translation. Using NAT, a user can translate incoming and outgoing flows. By doing so, a user creates security zones within the network while also preserving the IP address space. With eVPN distributed NAT, we offer NAT on a VXLAN eVPN leaf spine fabric. Along with NAT, the solution provides enhancements like mobility and traffic engineering at host level or traffic engineering on the border nodes for data center interconnect. Let's begin by looking at some use cases for this solution. I want to start with overlapping IPs. So, this diagram here is a typical VXLAN eVPN leaf spine topology. We have four VTAPs which act as NAT gateways, and we have a spine which is also configured as a VTAP and is a border node for this fabric. With this solution, each node has an overlapping private IP and an individual public IP. A user can engineer or design how they want to use these IPs. So for example, within a fabric, you could send traffic using a public IP or a private IP depending on the requirement. So this provides a lot of flexibility on how you want to design your NAT policies and your traffic policies. Next, we would look at perfware NAT. So, I was talking about how NAT provides security. With FERF, we take that a step further. With FERF where NAT, multiple customers can share services. So, in this case, with FERF where NAT, we are providing NAT a capability to differentiate these VERFs. Each VERF can have an overlapping IP address scheme. But depending on your configuration, you can design whether or not those verbs can talk to each other. Service leaves, which have lots of interwerf traffic, is a good use case for this configuration. Next, I want to talk about distributed approach for NAT. So in this case, we have to host in different verbs connected to separate VTAPs. When the traffic flows from host 1 to host 2, the NAT would take place on the local VTAPs. So the source NAT takes place on VTAP 1 and the destination NAT takes place on VTAP 2. And the spine, which is also configured as a VTAP, will do the route leaking. So that makes this very simple and easy to configure. So you don't have to worry about configuring Wolf B on VTAP 1 or configuring Wolf A on VTAP 2. We have source NAT, destination NAT on the distributed gateways, and then we have centralized Wolf leaking. Along with these two, we also have peer-based NAT filter, which provides us control over what we send outside the fabric. So as I said, this allows you to control what kind of traffic you send out. Let's say you have a use case where you have to NAT a whole slash 24 subnet. In that case, all the traffic would be NATed. But if you have three pairs, they, you know you don't want to send all the NATed traffic to these pairs. So with this filter, using a CLI, you configure which peer would receive the NATed traffic. So in your NAT configuration, you can still have a NAT for the slash 24, but the NAT traffic would only be sent to the peer which has been configured using the CLI system NVE NAT peer IP. This prevents any unnecessary traffic uh, between the service leaves, and also provides you a knob to control 
what you are sending out and because the centralized workflow is configured on the spine this this makes it a good combination to have next is scale so with the regular NAT today we support up to 1000 NAT entries but distributed NAT we can support up to 8000 NAT entries. I want to do a quick overview and comparison of the traditional NAT deployment versus EVPN distributed NAT. In a traditional NAT deployment there is a centralized point for NAT which in this case is the Borders Gateway Spine. Irrespective of where the traffic is going, the NAT always happens on the border node. Versus in a VPN distributed NAT solution, the distributed NAT is configured on individual leaves. So, because we're doing NAT on the leaves and then we're doing wolf leaking on the spine, you're saving the hardware resources and you're simplifying the configuration. In this case, both the source and the destination NAT would be configured on the leaves. So the source NAT is configured directly on the switch connected to the source. And similarly, the destination NAT would be performed directly on the switch connected to the destination host. If both source and destination are on the same switch, the source NAT is performed first and then the packet would be looped to the border gateway spine and then the destination NAT would be done. This is so because the wolf leaking is on the border gateway. So for any interwolf traffic, the traffic has to loop through the spine. Supported features. Today we support static NAT, IPv4 NAT, and 8k NAT rules slash entries which we talked about and this is supported on 9300 FX2 based platforms. In the future we want to support dynamic NAT, VPC, IPv6, NAT mobility, statistics for NAT and subnet based filtering. An overview of the configuration. So uh, before you configure NAT uh, you have to enable the VRF aware NAT and then you can define the NAT filter. You can have multiple peers which you can configure using the uh, system NVE NAT peer IP CLI and then you configure the static NAT wherein you can also call in the VRF to which the traffic belongs. Now, one thing which is different from a regular NAT application is where do you apply these rules? So in this case, the IP NAT inside is configured on the gateway SVI and IP NAT outside is configured on the L3 VNI SVI or your Wolf SVI for the VNI. That's the NAT configuration. The BTP configuration is this is for, from the spine perspective because the spine is also configured as the VTAP. You can configure wolf leaking on the spine and also advertise the public IP network in BGP. So that is an overview of the EVP and distributed NAT. Thank you.